I want the country to know that our entire administration will work closely with his team to ensure the smooth transition of power. There is important work to be done, and America must always come first. A little while ago, I had the honor of calling Senator Barack Obama to congratulate him. Please. To congratulate him on being elected the next president of the country that we both love. Last night, I congratulated Donald Trump and offered to work with him on behalf of our country. Welcome back. That's what it sounds like, what it should sound like when a U.S. presidential candidate concedes. But this is 2020, and so far there is not a concession. There doesn't even seem to be much of a transfer of power underway. Here to talk about why a presidential transition matters is our American Roundtable. Joining us this Sunday, Melody Barnes is a co-director of the Democracy Initiative at the University of Virginia, was on the Obama transition team in 2008. And Tim Naftali is a presidential historian well known to CBC viewers. Good to see you both. Appreciate you making the time. Uh, the president's been tweeting this morning. Uh, at one point, it looked like it was sort of a concession, uh, starting to tweet by saying, quote, he won, later tweeting that he concedes nothing. Uh, Melody Barnes, I'll start with you. What do you make of, of where we're at right now? Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you, Rosie, and to be with Tim this morning. We are in a place that the American public has not seen before in the history of our democracy. We have a longstanding tradition of the transfer of power peacefully. I know when I was starting my work in the White House in 08 and 09, that George W. Bush, the president, told his staff, and they were absolutely on board with being supportive of our work in transitioning into power. In fact, my counterparts in that administration invited me to lunch at the White House to talk about yeah. the work that they had done, the work we would be doing. So we're at a point where the president of the United States is living in a parallel universe, refuses to acknowledge what his own Department of Homeland Security says is the most secure election that they're aware of in recent history. And he's preventing the natural process that needs to take place so that the Biden-Harris administration can prepare to do their work. Um, that includes resources that need to flow to them, access to security briefings mm -hmm. and other things. So this is in fact, not only an unusual moment, but it is a it is a significant and a dangerous moment. Yeah, Tim Nafali, part of the reason I wanted to play those clips there off the top was to remind people of, of what it usually sounds like, what it usually looks like. Melody's mm. given some really good examples too. Just give me your take on on where we're at now, almost a week after you know the official election. Um, well, I'd add that you know Melody Melody's tra the transition for uh, Barack Obama also happened in a national crisis. Um, so in, in, on top of all of those routine needs that a new administration uh, has to stand up its, uh, its, its activities, the, in this case, as in 2008, 2009, the country is, is in an emergency. This, this time it's the COVID emergency, which makes a, a transition even more, more important. Where are we a week later? We're, we're waiting for the president to acknowledge uh, reality. At the same time, his legal efforts are failing. And so with each day, it became, becomes more and more likely that top elected Republicans are gonna try to find a way to, to shift their rhetoric, whether the president does or not is irrelevant. Yeah, and I, and I should remind Canadians, he, he doesn't need to concede. That's just sort of a, a tradition. Uh, what does need to happen are the things that you've both talked about, try, trying to get intelligence information and money to the transition team. Uh, Melody Barnes, as you were talking there, we showed some pictures of you at the table uh, with Joe Biden and, and with uh, President, uh, President Obama. But at no, as someone who knows Joe Biden, um, how do you think he's handling the concession? Because he certainly doesn't seem to be really, the lack of concession rather, he certainly doesn't seem to be talking about it. He doesn't seem to be publicly um, frustrated, although it must be very difficult for the team to get working. Well, you're exactly right. And not only did I have the pleasure, the honor of working with President-elect Biden in the White House, but when I was a staff person on the Senate Judiciary Committee, he was either the chairman or yeah. the ranking member on that committee. So I've had the opportunity to watch him at work for many years. And he is experienced. He knows what uh, a chaotic or a crisis moment looks like, but he's always going to be the mature adult in the room. 
and he recognizes that he will be inaugurated on January 20th. He has a fantastic group of people surrounding him, very experienced, and they're doing all the work that they can without um, the the announcement that needs to be made to allow resources and information to flow to the transition. And he's been talking to national, international leaders yeah. to indicate that America and American democracy um, is back and that we will be good allies and partners. So he's going to do all that he can, including standing up a COVID-19 task force so that we can, as Tim said, move through this moment of challenge and crisis. Tim, how, how dangerous is this? You heard uh, before the break there, Mary Trump, uh, the, the president's niece, who's written you know, a bestseller and, and you know, has some insight into how he thinks. Uh, and, and she suggested that it's quite dangerous what's happening now. I, I wonder what you think about that, either from a, a national security perspective or for the, the health of your democratic institutions. Well, I think it's dangerous for the health of our democratic institutions. It's, it's less of a challenge for our national security institutions. If the Biden... Harris team had no Washington experience, every day would count for them in, right. in preparing for January 20th. But on the, on the, in terms of de our democracy, this is very damaging. It's damaging because uh, 73 million people voted for Donald Trump and, and a good portion of those people may actually believe that the, that the election was taken from them. That is going to make any compromise between a Biden administration and Congress, which will have, a, probably a Senate majority in the Senate mm -hmm. and a very slim majority, Democratic majority in the House, much more difficult. So I think the challenge to our democracy is dangerous and will make also cooperation on dealing with COVID that much harder. Yeah. Mel Melody, what would you be your biggest concerns in terms of policy work that is is not able to get done or started in a real way because of this lack of briefings and lack of money? Is it COVID? Is it something else? Are there multiple things? Well, COVID stands out for me for obvious reasons. Um, America is now starting to set new records with the number of deaths per day. Um, and we're watching uh, an administration, the current administration, completely abdicate its responsibilities with regard to addressing this issue. So the fact that we are know that there's a vaccine that's coming, but the fact that the Biden uh, administration, incoming Biden administration, is not working with the current Trump administration to make sure that that vaccine is going to be distributed effectively and efficiently, mm -hmm. it will happen. But it's certainly slowing the process down for something that lit literally is a matter of life and death for Americans. But then that also has an effect on our economy um, and, a and the global economy. So all of these things are, are connected to one another. But I will also underscore what Tim said. I am deeply concerned about democratic culture and the fact that the pot is being stirred yeah. and the ability for Americans to to rally around and believe that this is a legitimate election and then for them to translate that information to their elected officials is a significant problem. Even as we start to deal with policy issues, even as Republican members of Congress are saying, look, if President Trump won't allow for these security briefings, yeah. we in fact will. Um, so there will be adults in the room, but this is certainly uh, a challenge and damaging both with regard to culture and with regard to the effectiveness and efficiency of the policy transition. Tim, Tim, I've only got about a minute left. What is what is the one thing you're most worried about right now as we're in this very strange period? I'm worried about the future of a stimulus package. Uh, uh, we need uh, economic assistance to get through the hard COVID winter that yeah. most everyone is anticipating. And uh, it's not clear uh, which side Mitch McConnell will be on in that debate. Yeah. And Mitch McConnell is gonna determine whether that happens either now or after President Biden takes the oath of office. Okay, thank you both so much. I learned a lot. What a pleasure to speak with you both this morning. Melody Bards and Tim Naftali, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure.